Joswick and George Klemensky and Eric Smith talk about community education. And I'm John Wigman. Uh, Frank Joswick was the former superintendent of the Blasky Community School District from 1935 until 1970. And I succeeded Frank in, in, at Pulaski. And uh, the Pulaski School District is very much involved with community education. And we're here today to, to learn a little bit about uh, how Pulaski became a community education school. So with that, I'm going to turn the question over to Eric and George, and they'll ask Frank uh, the questions to get the answers that we need to, to our, to our yeah. purpose of being here today. Okay, Good. thanks, John. Basically, I think what we would like to do is maybe start out with the first question about being philosophy of education. Why you did what you did in Pulaski. I mean, what is it that's, you know, what was your philosophy of, of education and community education? Well, I did, I uh, developed, I should say, my philosophy of education as a result of going to the University of Wisconsin for summer schools. And one of the teachers that I had was Ed Krug. Okay. And he was teaching a course in curriculum construction. Okay. What years? Do you remember what uh, years? It was, oh, uh, that was about uh, 1937, 38. Okay. okay. I started my first summer school for my master's degree. Okay. And uh, master's was degree. Was it 38 or 48, Frank? I think it was 48. I graduated in 1948. Oh, okay. Uh, with a master's. Okay. So. I was older by that time, but Ed Krug w explained to me, at least, what a school is like, or what it's for. What is education for? What does education mean? And one of the things that he started out with is the Judeo-Christian philosophy. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, and. Uh, the Judeo-Christian philosophy is the basis of our educational system and our life in this country. Our, that's, our, that's our aim. And the, one of the things that uh, he said was that uh, the idea of life, living, started way back. But uh, various people had various ideas of what living was all about. The Judeo-Christian philosophy was based on the fact that we are all going to develop goodness, mm -hmm. good for ourselves, good for the community. And one of the things, for instance, uh, that Christ taught was that the idea of goodness is very good, but it doesn't go just for selfishness. It goes for the whole community. Mm -hmm. Because if your neighbors are no good, you're probably have not a very good life or not a good environment for good self-development. The environment was the big thing. So Christ, well, maybe we should start with Aristotle and Socrates. See, that's the basis. Sure they developed the idea that we should develop some kind of a government. Government means getting together for one or two, three purposes. But Christ developed the idea a little more by saying, you have to love yourself and love thy neighbor. That's the basis of the community school. Mm -hmm. And love thy neighbor means that you have to get along with your neighbor. And the best way to get along is to peacefully get along. I lived in Pulaski and I didn't have a wheelbarrow. And my neighbor, said, Frank, let's get together and buy a wheelbarrow together because I only need it for a couple hours and I only need it for a couple hours because what's the use of buying a $50, $60 wheelbarrow just for one person or for one family? So I got together with that neighbor and we bought a wheelbarrow together. And that means togetherness. It means community. It means love thy neighbor as thyself. You see what I'm... Exactly. So that's the way the, uh, my philosophy of community development came in. I think that's the beginning of it. And then I took a course the following summer under Dr. Dawson, who would start teaching a course in school reorganization. Okay. So it sounds like a familiar refrain that we're going through again. Yeah, right. 
we are going to. Do you remember his? It was at, What was his first name? You remember? Because uh, that name has never popped up. Before. No, that's not one I've heard either. Heard, I was just Did curious. You, Dawson, it was. Dawson, yeah. Okay. Was he a University of Wisconsin? Frank? He was an uh, import from some university, oh. but just for the summer. Oh, I okay. See, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, Dr. Dawson said that a community school is a school that teaches the people or instructs the people and also services the people. Okay. And uh, he said that a good community school should have uh, 10,000 students. That was his... 10,000? 10,000 10, students. <laughs> It's not necessarily in the school itself, but yeah. in the community. Mm -hmm. Because in a group of 10,000 students, you have to have, you will have a variety of needs and a variety of interests and a variety of abilities. Sure. And <clears throat> so you ought to have a school that services or provides education for a variety of interests and abilities. And, okay, uh, and so if you have that kind of a school, you need to teach English, you need to teach mathematics, you need to, what does the, what does these people need? What do they need? Okay, they need that to, to, to develop a good life going back to the good life idea. And what is a good life? Well, you have to describe it by saying, well, you have a good job, you have conveniences, you have services, you have good neighbors, whatever is necessary not, for a community. Not just reading, writing, and right. arithmetic. Yeah. Common well, good, I think. Too. But, yeah, common good, right. Yes. Okay, well, uh, then if you, if you have that kind of a, if you have that kind of a need, you have to provide courses to service that need. And to provide that need, you have need of, you need a bigger school with a variety of teachers. Because one teacher can teach chemistry, but she can't teach all the subjects. Mm -hmm. She can't teach all the English and all the math. So you need a variety of teachers. To have a variety of teachers and courses, you have to have a wider tax base. Okay. Because having well, you really don't need a wider tax base. For instance, I was born and raised in Marathon County, okay. uh, seven miles from Frum Brothers. Did you ever hear of Frum Brothers? No, and I grew up in Clark County. <laughs> okay, Frum Brothers went to Canada someplace and started hunting, and they found fur coats or foxes. They brought some foxes to Marathon County oh, and they developed sure. a fox farm. Oh. And they became rich. And then they developed a ginseng garden sure. because they found some ginseng up there someplace. Okay. They were hunters. Well, anyhow, they became rich. Well, we had a little country school out there out of Marathon County. And the people said, wait a minute. Oh, Ed Frum, in the first place, was a good musician. He could play the fiddle uh, on the front porch, and everybody came and listened. So he was a, So we ought to have music in our country school. Now, oh, wait a minute. You can't have music. The teacher doesn't want to, They can't teach music. She never had a violin. Okay, Frum brothers had the money. And they said, okay, we'll import a teacher from Warsaw two days a week, and she will teach. She will teach music. Sure. So developed sure. another course. Yeah. What was your role in that? Were you? No, I was just an observer. Okay. You were, you were a okay. student in the school there, uh, right? Well, I, w I lived there because I saw Frum Brothers, and I saw them bring all those furs to Marathon City to load up to go to New York for auctions. OK. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. See? Well, anyhow, that gave me an idea. Well, yeah, you can have a country school without the large tax base if you have a big millionaire that will support you. <laughs> <laughs> See? So from the others were the supporters. Well, going back to my uh, own development, <laughs> I went to Brussels as a principal. And we only had uh, four teachers there, and it was a small school. 
uh, and it was a good, very good community, excellent people, good farmers. But uh, one of the things that happened was depression. I got there in 1933, and everybody was poor. The farmers were had milk, but they, it was only paid 50 cents a <laughs> uh, hundred. The farmers were poor. Everybody, you know who came along? Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. I got connected with the federal government. So Roosevelt developed the, all these. He, in the first place, he got himself a bunch of social scientists and economists in his cabinet. They developed these work programs. And one of the things that they developed is a dub, PWA project for providing work. And, he's, and so uh, we got the, you know, in the first place, I read my literature, mail. Sure, PWD projects, what's that? Well, okay, we'll provide some money for your community, providing that you, you provide some labor. Where's the labor? Well, we needed sidewalks. We needed a new roof, new roof on the Brussels High School. Yeah. We needed new windows, whatever. I said to the school board, I got, I think we can provide some work. So Joe Bushy, the school clerk, says, let's go to Sturgeon Bay and see how to apply for all that money that the it's federal kind of government is distributing. Well, that's interesting. And were there, were, Frank, were there any other schools at that time? Yes, yeah, Sevestable. By the way, they developed the first consolidated school in the state of Wisconsin. Right. But that was not for the purpose of work. That was for the purpose of providing more courses, especially agriculture, yeah. because yeah. that was needed. And what's interesting, Eric, yeah. is that uh, the town that I grew up in, our high school gymnasium was built to the WPA yeah. and same same project, in okay, essence, in the same era. Yeah. Okay. We, we had a meeting at... Uh, we had a meeting with a man by the name of Jones. He was on the county democratic committee. He says, okay, I'll go up to the courthouse and we will fill out the, uh, an application for these money that, the, uh, that Roosevelt is distributing, the federal government is distributing. <laughs> so, okay, we filled out an application and I think we uh, filled out an application for $4,000. Oh, so we thought that, well, that was would be big, big money big at money, that time. Right? Yeah. But we'll employ some people painting the school and building sidewalks and putting on a roof. We'll employ some people. That was my beginning of my community school. Okay. But that's right, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So, so, so in many ways what you had is you had some ideas that you got from people like Krug or, or you're well, growing up or you haven't uh, seen Krug yet, right? I haven't seen Krug yet. Okay. <laughs> but uh, you see, we developed a community school by need by, uh, oh, I should say, this evolved rather than, uh, we didn't start with a community school, right. it evolved. And evolved into that. Right, yeah. right. Trying to meet the needs of the community. The right. Trying to meet the needs of the community. I guess it's interesting though, why would you have yeah. taken that approach when so many other people you mean, wouldn't have done it that way? I mean, during well, that time. Many other people didn't apply to Roosevelt's uh, pocketbook. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but some of that some of that comes from your growing up and observing oh, yeah. what happened right, in right, your hometown. Right. Yeah, and I I saw the needs in the Brussels school district. Yeah. I saw the roof leaking, and I saw that. But it's interesting, though, Frank. When you see those needs, right? A lot of other people would see the same thing and say the school oh, doesn't have any business. Right, right. Messing I around that with that. John Wood stopped me in yeah. Pulaski. Tried to stop me right. in Pulaski because okay. he said this. Shoemaker should stick to his last. Right. That's the answer right. to your question. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, in this case, the school board was very much for it because their relatives needed jobs, too. Okay. Sure. She, yeah. So they said, okay, let's apply. So we went to the courthouse, applied for 4000 We came back to Jones Tavern, and we started talking. And, uh, well, okay. But I saw my Langemac from Sevastopol. And he had a school up there in an institute north of Sturgeon Bay, and he was applying. So they started talking to him. But Langemek says, oh, no, we applied for 14,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. 
because our was very we near that. Oh yeah. So we went back to the courthouse and applied <laughs> for seven thousand more. <laughs> Like $11,000? Yeah. Right. Ooh. So we have improved the school quite a bit. I guess. I became popular. <laughs> <laughs> because the school provided a service. Sure. The school employed all kinds of mm -hmm. farmers that were poor and, and all kinds of other people who needed jobs. So the school provided a service, mm -hmm. provided education, how to pay. Well, that was one of the things we'd how to build sidewalks. We had to develop contractors or, or sidewalk builders or whatever. Yeah. So that was a part of education. But did students now, students worked right along with that? No, at that time we didn't that develop that idea. That was developed okay. in Pulaski. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so we went back and the school improved. Well, in two years time, I got a job at Pulaski. And okay. the reason I went, to, I liked Brussels very much. The school board was very good to me. They gave me raises, but I, I went to Pulaski because I saw a wider area, mm -hmm. a better potential. See, Brussels is located between Lake Michigan and and uh, and, uh, well, and, Green, and Green, Bay. Green Bay. So it, we, it was kind of narrow. My idea of school consolidation was out of the question at that time. People weren't thinking of school consolidation. At that time, they called it consolidation. Sure. Well, that's when they had all the one-room schools. All right. That's right, right. That's well, then, yeah, oh, they loved the one-room school. By the way, mm -hmm. it, as I think back, that one-room school was a community school. Sure, in many ways. Right, right. Because the teacher lived in the district. She boarded with some farmer in the district. I did myself. I taught my country school for four years. And I mixed up with the people, and I went to their card parties, and I went to their auctions, and I went to their chicken bouillons. <laughs> See, sure. I became involved in the community. So I was just teaching for four years, and I got enough money to go back to college. So that's how I started going back to Stevens Point. Okay. See? And now this would have been in the middle 30s? Well, I, st I started teaching in 1923. Okay. When I was 18 years old. Okay. Yeah. Wow. But uh, anyhow, uh, where so did you go to? Where did you go to college for? Stevens Point. Oh, at Stevens Point. Okay. Three-year course. At that time, we could teach in a high school. I, mean, I, <laughs> I graduated from a three-year course, and I went uh, as a junior high school principal at Montello. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah, in Marquette County. Yeah. Well, anyhow, I got some. Well, I, maybe I shouldn't go back that far. Oh, that's good. That's, that's good. good. This is the roots. That's that's they want to know yeah. the roots. Yeah. The roots? Okay. Sure. sure. I went to church in Montello, and that was my regular church. And a man by the name of Richie was the principal of the, uh, the superintendent of schools at Wisconsin Rapids. And okay. he went to the same church. And I boarded at uh, O'Connell's. O'Connell's were related to Richie. So Richie came and visited the house, and I was living upstairs. And he started talking to me on the back porch, and he says, Frank, how would you like to teach at Wisconsin Rapids? Oh, sure, I'd like to teach at Wisconsin Rapids. Here, is small, here I saw bigger opportunities. Exactly, yeah. This is what this country is about, yeah. opportunities. OK, so I said yes. But he says, Frank, do you have a degree? I says, no. Oh, we got to have a degree. So I went back to the University of Minnesota. Okay. And okay. so I graduated with a degree in, in Minnesota, but this was in 1937. And you know what happened at Wisconsin Rapids? The paper mill closed up. Oh, oh okay. And the tax base shrunk. Oh, yeah. True. So Mr. Ritchie wrote me, says, Frank, I know I promised you a job. But we aren't hiring any teachers, and I will be giving oh. any raises. We are broke, or whatever. We have no That's, money. Okay. You see, you have to have resources to have a good school. Got well, that. anyhow, so I went with a pick and shovel, and I was building your road, Highway 29. Okay. <laughs> right, right, right past the house. <laughs> All right, see. 
Okay, I was picking with that pick and shovel in the middle of August. I still didn't have a job. This was, this was the time when teachers were by the bushel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, but one day, at teaching vacancy developed at, at Mosinee. And uh, one of the school board members heard about me. I won a state oratorical contest, and he heard about I could understand how you could do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, he came over uh, to the highway one day, and he says, is there Frank Joswick here? I said, yes. He says, we have a vacancy, and can you teach public speaking, and can you teach history and social science? I said, yes. So he says, come on over. We have a board meeting tonight. So I went home and I shaved. <laughs> <laughs> and I <coughs> went to Mosley and I got the job. Okay. See, uh, I'm going back to history, how this developed. Well, anyhow, I was at Mosley for two years. And I went back to the University of Minnesota for one summer session. And I had a roommate by the name of Kenneth Visti. He was the principal of the high school at Kenneth Visti's son is a, was a doctor with that. Uh, I know, you know, probably never saw him, but he was crippled, paralyzed. Now, John, you seem to know. Well, the Visti's are Door County, sure. Yes, okay. County. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. Straight connection. Away. Well, yeah. anyhow, Kenneth says, you know what? I got elected county superintendent of schools. There's a vacancy at Brussels. Okay, and that's how you got to Brussels. That's right. That's how I got to Brussels. So from Brussels, I went to Pulaski. That's when I went to summer school, started going to summer school, because the need developed for a master's degree. Oh, OK. I sure. went to the school board meetings, and I went to principals' meetings, and they said, wait a minute, you can't advance very far without a master's. Now so, you have to have a doctorate. Yeah. Right. right. So I went back to get a master's. That's how I took a course in the Krug. And that's when you met and Krug I, and... and that's okay. what I met Dr. Dawson. Okay. Shirley Cooper. Shirley Cooper's the other one. That's but in some but, ways, but you, had, you had a lot of the philosophy, oh, though, before you even met John up Guy Fawkes? Oh, sure. <laughs> but well, how does that enter in? Well, John Guy Fawkes is one of my teachers. I don't remember in what. In the first place, he never came to class very much. He had <laughs> John, John, John Guy never changed until he retired. <laughs> Cooper was the okay. uh, 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 visiting the, professor, wasn't he, Frank? He was a visiting professor. He was the uh, assistant or associate uh, director of the uh, National School. A ASA? Yeah, National School Executives Association. Okay. okay. See, I had him. Well, so. I developed the idea that you have to have a variety of courses, and you have to have... One of the things I did in Pulaski is that we only had 100 students in the high school. We had 80 in the oh, grades. Okay. And Dr. Dawson says you have to have 10,000 to have a variety of courses. So guess what Frank did? Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the you things... You took that seriously, that 10,000? Yeah. You see, I was older. Yeah. <laughs> Young kids don't absorb. <laughs> I was older. Well, anyhow, so uh, one of the things that the school board did at Pulaski, we had tuition students at that time. Okay. Okay, they paid $80 a year to come to high school. Hmm. And we got more money into the pocket. That developed our more resources, sure. see. So we developed more. We got a bigger and bigger school. I got $100 more because I went to the, every farmer in, that, in the community area to have those kids come to a, Not very many kids started, went to high school in 1940. Did you know that? Sure. Is that right? <laughs> How many? Not many did then? Or no. Some most did? Or most of them? Or oh. No. Well, most no. quit then. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. because the farmers needed to Go work. Go back to the farm. And the, farm, uh, the farmers were... Well, at that time, the idea of education was good, but the farmers didn't have the resources to send their kids to school. And in that whole area, by the way, one of the things that struck in me in my mind, I don't remember what teacher it was, whether it was Dawson or, or Krug, but they defined the community, school community to me. 
So oh. you have a ne definition of the area. Sure. One of the things they taught me is this. Okay, this teacher at the university said, what is a community? Well, the community is where people have common interests. Interesting. They sure. come to the yeah. same store, they come to the same doctor, they have services in that community. And you go out into the area and see where the people drive to Pulaski. Because at that time they had horse and buggy business. True. And they had these long driveways to the house or to mm -hmm. the barn. And the driveways developed a lot of ruts in the spring of the year. And he says, okay, you watch the rut. And wherever it's deeper, if, it's, if the rut is deeper on the way to Pulaski than it is to Banda Wells, then that farmer belongs to the Pulaski community. Right. Oh, you got to be and, and, so, is... and so they really talked about natural community. Right. People selected their right. own community. Right, right, right. That's interesting. I See? like that. <laughs> yeah, the that, ruts. That, 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 that's very, very, very important. Yeah. So I, my philosophy, See, one of the arguments at that time when school organization got started is that every school principal that was alive <laughs> wanted to develop a bigger school because he recognized sure. the need for a bigger school to have a variety of courses. Sure. And there was a little competition between Seymour, by the way, Mar <laughs> Martins was my adversary. <laughs> well, not necessarily. But anyhow, he said, now, wait a minute, we want some of those kids, too, from the boat. So I said, wait a minute, we'll only go where we are closer to Pulaski. If that farmer is closer to Pulaski, that's our area, because his ruts are deeper this way. <laughs> See? <laughs> they use that argument many times, by the way. We go out there and tell the people, yeah, you, yeah, you go to ruts. Pulaski. Yeah. Yes, you, because your ruts are bigger here. <laughs> <laughs> that's fascinating. I've never heard that before. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's great. So. Yeah, ruts are bigger. So that's the way we got those farmers interested. And they were, as they became more prosperous, as each farmer became more prosperous, and as they got more machinery, the kids didn't need, as, they were not needed as much on the farm as they were 10 years before, sure. before right. machinery and before prosperity. So more and more kids came to high school. And then one of the things that developed was, uh, let's see, community school, in my mind, was a development, not an, an accident. <laughs> so everything was planned? Well, it was planned by natural development. OK. <laughs> so many of these, find a, see, I got, we got some kids to come to high school from seven, eight miles out. And one of the things that Mr. Colliday says, Alfred should go to high school, but he has no way to get there. Can't walk seven miles. You see, through a country school, we walked. Oh, I suppose. Oh, we got there, so. Uh, but uh, uh, my, my boy would like to go to high school. He was very good in the grades. He could read like a million dollars, but he doesn't have any transport. So we developed the idea of a bus system. Hmm. And I think it was Dr. Sh Cooper that said in one of his classes that they have some buses in Ohio. Really? So I said, wait a minute, let's go to Ohio, find out. So I came back with that information to the school board. Do they, do they have any buses in Wisconsin then? Or just in that area? We were one of the first ones. No kidding. Right, right. Well, there's a little bit of history that nobody will know about. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and you went to Ohio. I don't know if anybody in Wisconsin, but uh, we didn't have buses and uh, nobody else in there. No one else had any buses? In the northeastern part of Wisconsin had any buses. Interesting. Huh. So we came back and I said to them, you know, they have buses and we probably should get a bus so we can get these kids to come to school because I was uh, very uh, enthusiastic about education. <laughs> My own family didn't have. I was the first one to go to high school out of seven kids. Sure. So. Yeah. Education was a good product to sell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, I'm going back. Well, that's good. I mean, that's, that's, good. Yeah. that's why you were the visionary, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> you really well, we can see why. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyhow, so I, one of the school board members, oh, no, those kids, let them walk the way I walked. But two, <laughs> two of the school board members, oh, yeah, we, ought to, well, we have no money. We need 
a bigger district, so reorganization came in. Well, anyhow, so Frank Minta and I, one of the school board members, signed a note for $400 to buy an old bus someplace, <laughs> some city bus. But that old bus didn't have seats. <laughs> so, so we put some planks around and some cement blocks Gee. and made some seats around. Right. What, what, what color did you paint it, Frank? Yeah. Yeah. What color did you paint it? Do you remember? I don't remember. I thought it was a red, white, and blue. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Well, anyhow. About what year was that? Do you remember that? Oh, it was about 1941, 42. Early 40s? Yeah, early okay. 40s. Okay, before, yeah. just before World yeah. War II. Yeah. 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 So we bought a bus and uh, we started. And the more transportation we provided, the more kids came to high school. Mm -hmm. And the more variety co sense. of courses we needed. Sure. Because there were different interests and different abilities. One of the things I learned in one of my education classes is that there are individual differences. <laughs> we, we never think of individual differences. But here were a bunch of kids that, hey, well, this guy wanted agriculture, this guy wanted to be a cabinet maker. <laughs> This guy wanted to be a math teacher, whatever. Yeah. So we needed a variety of courses to serve the interests and abilities of the kids. Well, then one of the one of the things that was interesting to me, as I look back, is that when we bought that bus, it was for the whole community, not just for the village of Pulaski. Okay. See, when sure. I came there to Pulaski. Uh, we just had a village and one mile around. Now we had a community need. So we, you know what we need? We invented the name of Pulaski Community Schools and we painted that on the bus. Oh, you okay. That was the first time we used the word community schools. So again, we're talking about 19, early 1940s. Yeah, correct. And it probably would have been real easy for Pulaski to say it was just their bus or Oh, and not yeah, well, consider the other area? Well, Pulaski High School was the center and, and a big yeah. name, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, but we, buy, we painted Pulaski Community Schools on the bus. <laughs> that was the first time we used the, generally used the word Pulaski Community School. That may be historical, too. You know, I don't know, you know, yeah. how many <laughs> places in the country would have had a community school on their bus back then, <laughs> you know? Right, right. Maybe right. none. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. yeah. So we developed the idea of buses. Now they have 44 buses. Yep. You see how this developed? And look and what a headache you gave them, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It drives them crazy, those buses. <laughs> right, right. Sure, the janitor was the, the bus driver. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, I can sweep the school. I give me a $4 more, I'll drive a bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. see. So we had bus transportation. Well, anyhow, but the more courses we needed and the more teachers we needed, we needed an expansion of the taxable area. But Frank, the school board member from Good Cheer, we were only three mi four miles out. Frank came, you know, one day he says, you know, I, I, he knew me in the first place because I lived in the district and I bought a house there and I visited all those farmers, you remember? Mm -hmm. I said, <laughs> So Frank, Frank came back and he says, hey, uh, you know, I was uh, talking uh, to you about uh, joining the district, and I think we are a little interested in joining Pulaski. Good cheer school. Yeah. I says, what's the big idea? Well, after a little conversation with Frank, 15, 20 minutes, he says, you know, our roof is leaking. <laughs> ah. <laughs> That's understandable. <laughs> yeah. And he says, you know, it takes tax money, and some of those farmers won't vote for taxes, <laughs> you know. Uh, we need a new roof. Maybe if, you, if we join you a little bit, you will put on a new roof. I says, I think we will. <laughs> <laughs> if you join us, we'll have a bigger tax base. We can have, sure. we, we'll have more resources. We'll put on a new roof. So we did. Okay. We didn't close that school. We kept it running for four or five years. Yeah until <laughs> more leaks developed and more kids came, huh. then they joined us. When they joined us, they didn't have to pay the $80 tuition. Right. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah, sure. sure. See, because the town uh, paid, and they, uh, and they were with us. We didn't have to pay tuition to their own high school. Mm -hmm. So then other schools, 
Well, every, that whole 31 country school districts joined us either by wow. conviction. 31? 31. Back, probably 36, if I recall. Frank. 36. And, and it, now this is when again, Frank? This is in the mid 40s, early mid 40s. Mid 40s. Yeah. yeah. Hard yeah. yeah. And so and so you really consolidated schools right. way all before all the 1960. Right. Well, it, took, it took all the way through 60 to get it done, right? Oh, right. Yeah. Before all of them wanted to come in. 57, 58. Yeah. Okay. 57, 58. What? You go, I didn't want to forget. Uh, what was your position in Pulaski? And were you? I was uh, chief. Uh, uh, principal, superintendent, Su principal, 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 yeah. supervisor, okay. principal. Yeah. So yeah. you were the head of the schools. Yeah, sure, okay. sure, sure. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. So we were the we, we well. One of the things that happened that was a very crucial moment was when uh, in nineteen uh, August twelfth, nineteen thirty eight. <laughs> August twelfth, I think. Okay. <laughs> Remember that date because that was the beginning of the Pulaski school system. It, it, parts of it. Okay. It began, they developed in parts. It didn't develop all at once. Uh -huh. Well, we needed room because the farmers wanted agriculture. I said, wait a minute. We can't have agriculture. We have no agriculture teacher. We have no room. See? So, what we did is go back to. Roosevelt uh, again. Right. <laughs> Roosevelt, right? <laughs> yeah, because PWA was still going on. PWA was a program that lasted quite a few years. Well, anyhow, we uh, got the uh, that if we provide 45 percent of the money from our district, PWA will give us 55,000 okay. to add onto the school. Sure. 55% or something? Right, yeah, right, right, right. But uh, we, had to we had to write a, a project, or we had to write, uh, write the application. And uh, the application said, your, your people will have to vote on that 45%. Uh, so <laughs> let's call a meeting. Boy, the meeting was hot. The taxpayers were against it, oh, especially those that didn't have kids in school. Sounds and familiar. didn't have services. Sounds familiar. You see? So naturally. Oh, he had a big meeting of 300 people, and boy, oh boy, it was a tough meeting. <laughs> uh, and and uh, I, we, at that time, the milkman, Dan Hutkevich was the milkman, he left milk on our porch every morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, he came to me that morning, he says, Frank, don't go to that meeting tonight because they'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I said, why? He says, oh, I just want to warn you because too many people are against that development of that uh, <laughs> school. <laughs> See? So I, I went to Al Kubiak. He was a boxer. Oh. I said, Frank, you, uh, Al, you sit in back of me. <laughs> <laughs> You're kidding. No. So you had the boxers that Al? Yeah, yeah. Frank had your bodyguard. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I love that. Al, I says, I'll give you two bucks since you sit in back of me. <laughs> anybody starts swinging, you swing too. <laughs> <laughs> so, Al came. My God, the meeting was hot and the meeting was hot. Finally, somebody in the audience says, I know the son of a gun that started this whole program. Frank Joswick, he sits right there. What's the big idea? So I stood up and I went out to the board and I showed them how the tax would be increased and how much and why we need it and how much room we need and why we need and we're getting the money from Roosevelt. The Republicans are talking now we want smaller government. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> In some exactly. respects, maybe we do, but that time, yeah. Roosevelt said we need bigger government. <laughs> well, anyhow, so uh, after I got done, one of the things that happened to me was a very good thing. Uh, just that very morning, I got a letter from one of the school board members from Brussels. We lost our principal, you come back to Brussels. <laughs> oh. We'll match the salary that you get at Pulaski. <laughs> okay. I said, well, uh, if they vote no on this project, I'm going to go back to Brussels. Okay. So I said that at the meeting. I pulled out the letter out of my pocket. I says, 
If you don't vote yes, I'm going back to Brussels. Well, at the end of the meeting, I had more discussion. And by God, they voted yes. They did. And we built an addition to the school. That's how we made more addition. Yeah. Then we needed a shop because some kids wanted to be farm mechanics or auto mechanics. So <laughs> one of the things that happened was one of our school board members went to Upper Michigan, and Upper Michigan was sinking at that time. The lumber industry was decaying. Mm -hmm. And a big hotel, they called it a boarding house in Michigan, in Michigan. And Stanley Kareski was a carpenter, and he was a kind of an entrepreneur. He went up there, he bought the hotel for 300 bucks. <laughs> and he bought the hotel, now what am I going to do with it? He got some people in Middle Michigan to dismantle it. He brought the lumber to Pulaski, and he dumped a bunch of lumber. Well, I encouraged a bunch of, a bunch of lumber on the backyard of our school, and it had nails in it. That's the time the kids got involved in work experience. <laughs> sure. <laughs> You're kidding, sure. <laughs> so this, uh, uh, I, or one of the teachers, let those kids pull those nails when we have discipline problems. <laughs> <laughs> and they developed, <laughs> and they did. And we developed a bunch of good lumber. Okay. That's the way our first shop was built. You probably dismantled that. Yeah, they're all. Nails are probably all out. And the school kids built the shop. So, and you used the lumber from the upper upper peninsula. <laughs> right. That little old shed. Right. The shed that was behind uh, the existing shop. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That was the first time. So actually, you had school kids that helped build the buildings. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, from that building, the shop teacher said, uh, "My God, you know there wasn't a house, a single house, new house built in Pulaski for 12 years. No, no. And no. one of the reasons was the people were poor, but they had become better." We ought to build, build a house just for a sample. And he says, you know, if these kids could build that shop, they could possibly build the house. So, my God, sure enough, we got the idea that we'll build the house. Hmm. And the shop teacher, we, uh, we developed the first portable house <laughs> uh, right on the lot, right next to the school building. Did you know, were there any other schools that did that? No. <laughs> Anyhow, so we developed this, sh uh, this house and we sold it uh, <laughs> to recover the expenses. Sure. And the band, that's how we got into the Red Book Red magazine. Book. <laughs> oh, okay. Book, so, really? so they, they, no, no. When, oh when was God, the data that, you know? of it. But they picked that up from a national standpoint then and yeah, said, right. take a look Cooper, at what they're doing. In yeah, yeah, Cooper, Shirley Cooper came to Pulaski to see what we did. Oh, okay. No, 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 this is Shirley the Cooper guy from AASA. Yeah. Oh, right, okay, right. the right. national right. organization. Sure. Yeah. And about what time was that, what huh? year was that about, that Red Book article on 51? Okay. So, oh, no, late 57 or 57? Okay. I have uh, the article. So, so the yeah. mid-50s, probably, yeah, something like that. Our, we had opposition from the labor unions. You know what they did to me? Well, not to me, to the Pulaski School District. They went to the state legislature, and uh, we're going to put in a bill that schools shouldn't be interfering with labor, building houses. Sure. But <laughs> I appeared before the committee at the state legislature, and we thought, well, this is educational. <laughs> People are learning how to build houses, how to use insulation, how to use whatever, and the kids are learning, and this, this is educational. Did you right. build just one house, Frank, or two? Well, we built a second one later. That was a, because of a need, too. I go back to the need. Mm -hmm. it also, it, most of this developed out of a need. Sure. We, so one of the things that happened as we developed we needed a new gym because that old gym was too small. And uh, and by the way, people from from the uh, village, older people, or especially graduates, they wanted to come and play basketball. <laughs> See, we developed a service. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so we needed a new gym. And you know what happened? 
right next to our school was an old uh, a house, and a widow was living in there, Mrs. John Stashak. And Mrs. John Stashak was 85 years old, and we went to her. We want to buy your house because we want to build a gym here. <laughs> and he says, oh, no. Oh, no, you can't buy me out because I have been living here for 40 years, and it's close to the church, and I want to stay here. And she says, finally, we convinced her that if we build a house for her down the street in a vacant <laughs> lot, we can have this house. Oh, really? That's where the gym is. Now. And that's why you built the second house. Right, right. <laughs> That's how we moved. And she even, she was okay and she moved yeah, down the well, street? Yeah, well, she did, yeah. 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 But the first house, when you did that, did you have the home act people then decorate it? Yeah. Right, right, right. Well, we developed all kinds of things. Oh, yeah. Developed measurements. We needed mathematics yeah. <laughs> and more of it. How did you get the notion about, so many people would not have thought to use, to have the kids in the school help out, saying that the kids shouldn't be doing that. Well, I, mean, why I did wasn't you... the first one to get that notion. Uh, 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 that work experience business that they have now, that partnership right. uh, that uh, they're developing, <laughs> that, uh, that was, in, the, uh, that was in, in human nature in the first place. See, kind of the Cook right said natural. that we have to develop something to develop what human nature wants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, the beginning of that philosophy. Sure. More of a natural thing yeah, to right. do. Right. Yeah, natural development. Well, anyhow, uh, another thing that happened in Pulaski was that uh, by the 1940-41, the DNR or somebody got sick because of the water system. He got some sickness. And this, some doctor says that's because of the water. Mm. You know what happened? DNR came and said, wait a minute, somebody ought to take a survey of the water. The biology teacher says, by the way, our kids have a project. We'd let them go and, and collect the water samples from all the houses in the village. Sure. So we collected all the water samples. And the water samples, fit, over 50% of the wells were polluted. Really? The toilets, well, I, oh. I bought a house without that. We had to go outside to, anyhow. So the uh, people said, wait a minute, we need a sewer and water system. Because these outside toilets are not good anymore, and the water is, so we had a big meeting. And there, the school the biology teacher explained this they took a survey. That's hmm. another thing I learned at the university is take surveys, research. Research. <laughs> See? So we took, a, and by God, the people voted for the waterworks. Again, Roosevelt came in and <laughs> gave us 50% of the money for waterworks. <laughs> See? So we, the school became evolved over a period of time into a service agency in addition to an educational okay. Human okay. development. You start with the first grade in human development, but you ought to have human development all the way, mm. you see. So, okay, that was the, on the way to goodness, going back to Krug's <laughs> sure. idea of how do you develop goodness? Well, you don't develop goodness all by yourself. No. You develop because of community activities or because of community life. And so one of the things that developed over a period of time, I was a big advocate, at least I was, and a few other people were, not only me, but I encouraged the teachers to take part in other projects. If this biology teacher could develop this water system. Yeah. <laughs> See, other teachers could develop other things. Do you remember that biology teacher's name? <laughs> Beckler, I think it was. I'm just curious. <laughs> well, anyhow, that was the beginning. So one of the things that happened as, as these farmers became richer and had more machinery, and these kids graduated from high school, and, and one of the things developed is that we needed jobs. We needed jobs. Well. Okay, we need, how do we get jobs? I belong to the Chamber of Commerce. That's why you're, you and, <laughs> and, and so, uh, because I was in the community. 
So you have to be identified with the community. Right. So one of the things we developed in that chamber of commerce is we needed jobs. How do you get jobs? Well, OK, we could have two, three jobs in the store. Maybe we could have two, three more jobs here and there. But we need an industry. We need some factory to come in. Something more than a few jobs. Right. right. Yeah. So how do you get a factory? So you know what? We started to get books on industrial development on how to get a factory. Who's, who's we? You in the chamber Why? of commerce? Uh, yeah. Well, Frank also taught. He was a supervising principal, but he taught the social studies classes. <laughs> right, right. Ah, OK. So I, he yeah. taught those seniors. Yeah, right, right. OK. So this, one, one of the things we did is to, uh, that's an, uh, well, that all these to, comes together eventually. <laughs> Sorry, tell your stories. <laughs> okay. Well, anyhow, the cha few Chamber of Commerce members and I got together one day in the classroom again. The school became the meeting place. Sure. And we developed an idea. By God, we ought to, how do you get it? So we advertised in the paper and all over. How, well, no industry came. Let's develop our own. Well, how, you need capital. <laughs> you, need, right. you need some idea. What are you going to make? What are you going to sell? Right. Well, anyhow, one of the things we developed is what we called Pulaski Industries. Okay. Uh, that's the story by itself. What time is it? <laughs> Don't worry about it. We're okay. Okay. Frank's worried about eating, that's all. <laughs> these, kids, these kids want to stay out of school anyway, so it's interesting, right? Okay. Pulaski Industries was an organization, again, where, you be, where people work together, going back to Christ's idea, love thy neighbor as thyself, you have to work together. Otherwise, <laughs> you can't do it all by yourself because nobody in the Pulaski had a million dollars to start the factory. You know what we did? We learned how to, well, one of the things that developed was that the governor had what he called an industrial development conference at Green Lake, Wisconsin, okay. Baptist Assembly. Sure. Baptist, sure. The Heidel okay. House and all those places right. over there, sure. Right. Yeah. You know what? I was uh, supposedly doing nothing during the summer. Frank, you go to that industrial development conference and see what you can learn from all those. That was a conference of all people that owned factories, wanted to build more okay. factories there or someplace else, and what also a conference for people who wanted industry. So I was okay. the representative of Pulaski. From Pulaski? Yeah. What, about what year was that? Uh, about 1954, 43, 44. Just toward the end okay. of the war? No, at the right, middle. Right of in the, the middle of the war. Middle of the war. Oh, well, oh okay, you know, no, that's why? interesting, yeah. Opportune time. Sure, because Be they were looking for. For, for supplies. <coughs> sure. Because <laughs> they said uh, supplies will win the war. Sure, yeah. more resources for the war, right? <laughs> right, yeah. right. Sure. Yeah. So I went to this. Uh, Industrial Development Conference. And you know what happened? I listened there for three, four days, and I learned a few things, and I got some booklets on industry development. But one of the things that happened was dinner time. And I sat across the table from two guys by the name of Paul Coppins, Paul Gilkerson, and John Coppins. <laughs> and I said, by the way, I'm the principal at Pulaski. And who are you? Well, I'm the accountant for Sears Roebuck Shoe Department. Mm -hmm. And I am the salesman for the shoe department. OK. And by God, we want to start our own shoe factory. Where can we start? I says, why don't you come to Pulaski? <laughs> Pulaski Industries will build a building for you, because we organized a, a corporation. Sure. I learned how to organize a corporation. <laughs> I learned that. Why did you use the social studies students for yeah, Well, anyhow, to get it going. Oh, to oh, get okay. it going? Yeah. yeah, I want to hear that. Well, yeah, because we needed labor. We needed jobs, sure. you see, because people that were needed extra jobs. Well, anyhow, the social science classes, the kids uh, sent out letters to all the people, and as many as we could, 1,500 letters. Uh, what are the needs? What is your most, what do you want, clothes? One lady says we need a paper mill. 
I says, that's impossible. We had to have a project that was reasonable and workable. Sure. So we need what? Most of the people marked, we need a job. Same thing that they have now. We need jobs. jobs. <laughs> well, yeah, good that job. hasn't changed. Yeah. Oh, OK. 300, 400 letters came back, and the predominant question was, we need jobs. That's how we developed the, uh, the uh, industrial development. Classic industry. Uh, so. Yeah, because it fulfilled a need. And you solicited <laughs> out for money? Oh, we went to all kinds of people to get money. To, uh, that's Pulaski Industries. And uh, as I look back, it was a wise move that we stopped at $1,000 investment. Each share was $100, but you couldn't buy more than 10 shares. Oh, really? So, why, why so, so nobody could invest more than 1000 Right. Yeah. Why was there no dominance? Yeah. You couldn't have one person take over? or That's right. No dominance. So it was a community. Because that was the trouble with Europe. Europe, too, too few people got too much domination. <laughs> it was controlled by a handful of people. Democracy. Yeah. See? Another thing was, at, I stood up in front of these people that invested the money. I said, don't invest more than 1000 because we may lose. This is a risky proposition because we don't know how that factory is going to do. It may go broke in two years' time. Right. So I said, don't risk too much. See, so that's why we limited it to $1,000. Okay. And we got 82 people to invest money. And then you had money for Coppins. So you go back to Coppins. Then we went back to Coppins. And, and sure. it told you, we have some money to build a factory for you. And we'll rent it to you for cheap money. Because one of the things I read in the book is that you have to provide an incentive <laughs> for exactly these people right. to come to Pulaski. <coughs> they right. won't come there because of hot air or because of holy sausage. <laughs> well, <laughs> some but, might. <laughs> but, but, but you also told them that you had a labor supply. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And, a labor supply. And, and you knew that because students from your class had solicited the information from right, the community. Right, right. I, that's another point, too, that's kind of interesting for yeah. me because I'm not sure how many communities would have done surveys, oh, community yeah. surveys with and, their kids. And particularly with the kids. Right, right. Right. Community school. Yeah. I mean, that is. That's exactly what we're well, talking about. Well, another part to this whole business was uh, we had a newspaper in Pulaski called the Tricopa, run by the Reardons. They were big shots in the telephone business. They also uh, developed a newspaper to get advertising from the businessmen. Mm -hmm. But they only had 250 copies. And you know oh. what happened to that newspaper? The, when the businessmen find out, found out that they only had 250 copies, they dropped the advertising. Okay. So Reardon was going broke. He dropped the newspaper. I, wait a minute. The English, the journalism class developed because we need a, a newspaper. <laughs> See? And we developed the Pulaski News. And that's a very important part of the community schools, as I see it, because the Pulaski News paper was developed by the school, but in the first place it was two small typewritten sheets and we started. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, exactly. Frank, when did that start? Do you know when, the, when that uh, newspaper was taken over by the school? Yeah, about that. Okay. Was oh. 50 some years old. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Was it that long ago? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The wow. Past, yeah. I didn't realize That's it was that long. That's the only town, in, uh, the only school in Wisconsin that has a community newspaper. See, there are only a couple of places in the country, the whole United even, States. even to this day. Yeah. yeah. So the Pulaski News became the booster for the Pulaski Community Schools, as well as the advertiser for the community. Sure. Community so development. The, and the kids went out to solicit ads. They got work experience in business, see? So it became an educational tool. We educated the people why they should join the Pulaski School District. That was co connected with school reorganization. So you had your own propaganda machine. <laughs> right. You used that same word that the English teacher used. <laughs> right. Frank or John, uh, now that newspaper is still put out by the school. How many students are involved in that 
today. Do you know any idea? Class every year. Two or three classes. It could be 40, 50, 60 kids. That are involved in the operation of that whole newspaper. Journalism. Yeah. Sail journalism class. That's called the journal. It was started with an English class. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They have a they have a fancy name for it, but it really is a class that produces it. And yeah. And they have their own ad. They have their own editor. Although the school district does in the high school principal's office. That's a little business manager. Okay. Yeah. Well, well that's sir. certainly that certainly made you famous because when George and I talk about that, oh, people that's right. just can't believe that. <laughs> yeah. And then we tell them it's still doing. Still that's going. how it started. Yeah. Now, yeah. And there was a need again. Yeah. Right. Because rather they, than let the paper just fold and not have right, one. Right. 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 The rear then dropped it, so we picked it up. Just out of curiosity, did you buy the printing equipment, or did no, you? Did no, you? We don't no. still don't print it. Oh, you still don't print it. You you job that out. Yeah. Okay. Always have. Except you started printing with little hectographs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah Finally, we developed the idea, well, there ought to be a printed outfit on some good machine. So we had to farm it out to the Shono Evening Leader, by the way. It's now in Green Bay. Yeah. The we took bids. Yeah, we took well, bids. Shelman did it at Crown of Falls. Oh, yeah, Shelman. Yeah. Shelman did it at yeah. Crown of Falls. And now that's still a weekly, correct? No, every right. other week. Every other week. Uh, every other week. One of the thing, uh, one of the laws in the state of Wisconsin is that you have to take a school census mm -hmm. once a year. So we sent out all kinds of people to collect the school census, but we also gave them a dollar extra if they sell the subscription. <laughs> 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 That's good. <laughs> so uh, everybody went out to sell subscriptions. <laughs> At the same time, the same school time census. Census. And, and the subscriptions were not high, four or five bucks. Yeah, yeah right. For At that time, two bucks yeah. we started with yeah. two, two, three dollars. Mm -hmm. That's how. Did you, was that pretty much self supporting? The schools didn't put money into that, or did schools I put some I think something? some years we probably did, yeah. We well, probably had salary. And the, the, and the first maybe. place, it was hard, for us, hard to operate, to separate the cost. Because this office girl was taking care of the money. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. See, and, uh, the cost was kind of intermingled. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Again, so, a teacher is a teacher, so yeah. that's part of the fact. That's part of right. education. Sure. Yeah. So you can't totally separate. That, that's, that's been your argument all along, that you can't separate the schools from the community. Right, right. right. They're all but uh, when you talk about separating the schools from the community, one of the things that came to I, one of the things that I learned is that we develop because of heredity and environment. Mm -hmm. But environment doesn't quit at the school. Environment quits in the community. It takes a whole village to educate the child. Right. Yeah, we hear a lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. One of the reasons why the inner city schools are, the schools itself may be good. It, it develops goodness, going back to goodness, it develops goodness, but the kid graduates from school and he goes into the community and he sees everybody smoking cigarettes. Hmm. <laughs> so he starts smoking because there's peer pressure, not only peer, and the old man is start drinking whiskey, so it's no use teaching uh, smoking, no smoking in school if you, if you don't smoke it all the way. <laughs> didn't you, Frank, didn't you have something with the teachers that they, the teachers did some community service well, or something? I was yeah, I was going to ask about the that as well. I was interested in, too, was the business about your pool. <laughs> oh, I'll get to that, you. Okay. Yeah, okay, it might take us five hours. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one of, well, uh, this uh, survey that the kids did on the, uh, on the uh, employment, we need jobs. Sure. And the survey that the biology teacher did on the water gave me an idea that the teachers ought to be more interested in the community, not just four o'clock and run out of town, but they ought to take part in community. That's why John and John's wife go to the church and they <laughs> are interested in the community. And the community is not just one little bird down the main street. It's it's all over, uh, wherever the rats go. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, so, the rats, yeah. and so the uh, teachers were encouraged to take part in the community. How do you take part? Well, one of the things you have to do is to live in the community. Mm -hmm. Because 
if you would, uh, if you don't live in the community, you don't know the community. How can you take a survey if you don't know what's going on? Exactly. So, to live in the community, you have to live in the community. So you know what? Our school board gave everybody two hundred dollars more if you lived in the community. <laughs> if you lived. I, I find that incredible. <laughs> within, within, within the Pulaski School District, right? Right, right. They still do. I don't know. I don't know. Well, only. You know what I think now? If I was the chief there, I would recommend that they give them five hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it a little, right? If they take part in the community service. Now, now you you went beyond that though. At some point, you said not only do you live here, but you have to do, you have to do some activities. Right. You have to go to the store and buy a package of corn flakes, because then the storekeeper will get to know you. Right. Because if you go to the farm auction, the people will get to know you, and you will get to know the community, because the community and the school are interwoven, you see. And so you, so Bryson went, and he was substituted as a policeman, yeah. and he <laughs> discovered that uh, we need a bus service to Pulaski Hospital, uh, to Green Bay Hospitals, what they, what say, the rescue squad. Yeah, the rescue squad. Yeah. Bryson got the idea we need a rescue squad. That's why we have a rescue squad in Pulaski. But he got, and he got that because he wound up working with the police department. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, because he was involved in the community. Sure. See, mm -hmm. see, and other projects developed like that. Yeah. See, when I went to school at Minneapolis, I drove on 29 all the way down, and I stopped at some store to buy uh, some uh, donuts or whatever. And I asked the girl at the store, and I says, uh, who are the teachers? We don't know all the, we don't know the teachers. How can that teacher be, uh, be a part of the community development program, not only individual development, but community development, if he doesn't, <laughs> if nobody knows him in the community, right. see? Yeah. So, it's all part of the community school. That's all part of the community school idea. I remember when I first when I first came in the state, it was 1977, yeah. and I came from Minnesota. And when one of the first people I ran across was Frank, and and I went up there, and I think it must have been still in the year 1977. And I'll never forget it because I met you, and I can't remember which motel it was, but you were interviewing doctors for the clinic. Oh yeah, right. and, and I'll never forget that because I mean, here was the superintendent of schools of Pulaski, you know, right. meeting me, and he says, "Well, he says we can't talk too long." He says, "Because I'm interviewing some doctors." <laughs> right, yeah. that's another angle. Yeah. See, uh, because the doctor left us. Yeah. Uh, Shippy died or whatever. He got to be 78 years old. He says, "Forget it. I'm going." to Florida. <laughs> uh, so we needed a doctor. That's another thing. Well, I don't know if we took a survey or if we did. Well, anyhow, there's common knowledge in the community that we needed a doctor. Rather than driving in the Green Bay. Right, right. right. Because the senior citizens especially, mm -hmm. they need a doctor close by. They can't be right. they, So we needed a doctor. Well, you know one of the things that happened? Somebody read a, a little article in some newspaper about National Health Service. Did you ever hear of National Health Service? Mm -hmm. Okay, National Health Service said that the federal government is subsidizing young students in, in medical colleges if they go to a small town. Right. And if they go to uh, even a large town, providing that the large town or the poverty area needs a doctor. If they locate in that doctor, we will give you some subsidy to get your college education. Sure. I said, now wait a minute, I'll write to that National Health Service. <laughs> By God, they said, yeah, we will help you find a doctor, because we have a plan here of getting doctors into a small town. What plan? Well, okay, you come to a meeting in Minnesota, because Minnesota was but the Mayo Clinic or even... Oh, okay. I, sure, that would make you know, Rochester over there. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I went to a meeting. I interviewed uh, doctors that were seniors uh, in the medical school to come to a... Uh, well, nobody wanted to come to a small town. That was punk. Mm -hmm. well, one of the things I did, or the uh, whatever, biology, 
just says, wait a minute, we'll tell you what kind of a community do we need to get a doctor? Well, one of the requirements was that it has 6,000, at least 6,000 patients. Oh, okay. Because a doctor won't survive with three people. Uh, oh, true. <laughs> you need area Base. again. Yeah. So we had a community of at least 10,000 people. That's what <laughs> Sure. <laughs> or Dawson said, you need 10,000 for education. You need 6,000 for a doctor. <laughs> Okay. Same, same thing, same kind of thing yeah. permeated. And as a result, they formed a medical committee. Right. Right. Involved. And then it's you have a community. clinic now, right? And we brought in people. Yeah. Uh, built but, a clinic. Who built, you know, that was private enterprise. But Frank, let me let me back up to one another. Now, the Tri-County Corporation would still exist, right? Is yeah. Was well, that? That's a different one. But was that, was that started with some of those other ideas, the industrial yeah, park, yeah, some yeah. of those kinds of things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, we didn't have industrial park at that time. You just was, got the land, and right. you built. So oh, we never, got, we never that's finished that's the story. That's that's with John Coppins. <laughs> oh yeah, well, John Coppins and, and Paul Dirkerson came, and they started a shoe factory. Okay. And All right. One yeah. of the things, one of the, uh, what, we need labor here in this shoe factory. What kind of? We need labor with people who are good with their hands. So you know what? I don't know, the guidance teacher or somebody said, oh yeah, there's a test from the University of Minnesota on finger dexterity. Oh, really? So we tested all kinds of people, <laughs> and we the gave them, we, You're, right? And you so, at the school there, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and so Mr. Johnson was the chief of the shoe factory business. He came to town. He didn't have a house. I gave him a house, half of my house. Yeah. Well, anyhow. Uh, Johnson says, well, okay, you pick me the best people for with finger dexterity because that's what's needed in a shoe factory. Yeah. See, again, to uh, going really. back to what do you call that uh, in school? <laughs> uh, that, are you adapted to that kind of work? Yeah, the aptitude test. Yeah, yeah aptitude, aptitude, sure, aptitude. Test. Right. But you did that for adults as well as oh, high yeah, school yeah, kids, oh, right? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. it was anybody in the community yeah, that wanted yeah, to work yeah, there. Yeah. More, more, more women than men really were. Right, Especially right, during right. that era, right? right I mean, this right. is going back to the Sewing 40. skills and some things like yeah. that. Yeah. And so on. Sure. Right. So they hired the first 60 people, and most of them were on the, on the basis of that test recommendation. Right. You know what? Johnson came to me six months later. He says, you know, our production is the best of any place that I have ever been. <laughs> Why? Because these people have aptitude. <laughs> For shoe for finger dexterity. You match the needs with right. the people again. Right, right, right. The, then the next step with the Alaska Industries was the boat factory, right? Yeah, well, boat factory came a little later. That was right. also a development as a result of my visit to to uh, in the industrial development conference at Green Lake. Oh, another conference. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah they were, you were the head of. Okay. So I sat. I sat across the table again. The same thing happened in Boy, they should not sit across the table from you. <laughs> 1954. And here is uh, two guys from Milwaukee, George Carver and Paul and uh, George Verhagen. Okay. Uh, or Charlie Carter. Charlie Carter. George Verhagen. <laughs> well, anyhow, they said, we have a little factory in, Pal in Milwaukee, but we can't buy more land. We need uh, more labor, and labor in Milwaukee is, is expensive because they all want 10 bucks an hour. Yeah. We'll only pay seven <laughs> or whatever. I said, hey, God, you know, we have some money in Pulaski Industries. <laughs> we'll be <laughs> affected by God if they didn't come. That's how Carver Boat Company See, came. Carver Boat is Carter, first three letters, C-A-R, yeah. oh, okay. and Verhagen, E-E-R. Oh, Carver, okay. So it wasn't, there's no Carver. Okay, I, I didn't realize that. Charlie Carter and, uh, and George Verhagen. George Verhagen. Verhagen. Okay. But you know what? Charlie Carter got interested in aeroplanes. <laughs> and he bought an air. Uh, That's why we're at the Plasky Airport where it is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Charlie Carter bought himself some land, uh, 80 acres out in the country, and he developed an airport <laughs> so that he could fly his aeroplane. <laughs> Well, business then context. The George Verhagen didn't want to run the factory by himself. They put it up for sale. And you know what? Uh, what's his name? Wally. Wally Markham? Wally Markham and, uh, and a Glenn teacher. Nordine. And, a, and Glenn Nordine was the commercial teacher at Okano Falls. Yeah. 
And those, Wally Markham and Glenn Nordine, Wally Markham was the super, uh, the chief of the Ocanto Falls, Ocanto, what they be called cruisers. Okay. And he knew how to make boats. Glenn Nordine knew how business because he was a commercial teacher and kept books. So okay. the two of them got together, and Orville Kubiak knew, uh, what's his name? Glenn? No, no, the other guy. Oh, Wally? Wally. Yeah. He was a good friend of Wally's. Hmm. Orville brought those two guys to Pulaski. Here's a boat factory for sale you want to buy. Yeah, we'll buy it. And again, we gave them an incentive for cheap or cheap rent yeah. for sure. the first few. And we uh, and they came to Pulaski, and that's why they now employ 825 people. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It went through a couple of hands just yeah. since then. Yeah. yeah. Well, but it's, Wally, still going, it's still going strong, right? Well, when oh, Wally sure. and Glenn had it, it really went well. Very. But then well. when they sold it, the outside people. Interest, they employed 1,200. Now, but them, but, but those part those of that was the timing on that too, in terms yeah. of oh, sure. what was oh, sure. sales of boats and. Well, we took advantage of opportunities and needs. Right. See. Going back See, and in fact, when I was in Pul Pulaski not a long time ago, there was the home economics department or something was doing some curtains or something for some special boats. Yeah, sure, sure. sure. And we used the school district to help carve our train. Right. right, right, right. Now, do you work with the vocational technical system as well yeah, as you yeah, do that? Yeah, yeah. So you reached out to the broader community. Well, that's where CSOs come in very good because that's another thing. We, ne we needed more courses and we needed more... But the vocational school developed the idea of sending teachers to Pulaski. Okay. Or to any other town. Right. Sure. So we developed the vocational connection. Uh -huh. See. Going back to the, yeah, you see. And that's, well, going back to the doctor business, finally, <laughs> being doctors. <laughs> for well, that makes sense. For senior, uh, seniors in medical schools. Uh -huh. And I went to that convention. I entered. I must have interviewed about 15 of them there. Anyhow, uh, one of the, uh, <laughs> an interesting thing for you is I went back through Pulaski, Mississippi. Oh. <laughs> and I said, let's stop and have a lunch here. I stopped at the restaurant. I said, there must be a lot of Polish people here. And the French girl says, uh, I don't know of any Polish. <laughs> but she says, unless there are some old timers in the cemetery. <laughs> so I went to the cemetery. I got there were no Polish. No, not at all. No. See, I wonder if they knew. I mean, you know, well, much of their history. Well, I don't know how they developed. Well, pick the name. well, you know, Frank, and I have to tell you, this is another aside because I was doing some work in New York. Yeah. And the town was Pulaski, and and yeah. they were telling me that it, they pronounce it Pulaski. And so there was an audience of maybe 200 people, and I yeah. said, you know, the trouble with you people is, I mean, you don't even pronounce the name of your town right, <laughs> and it's Pulaski. Yeah. And this, there was a little old lady that jumped up. She was about 80 years old, and she said, that's right. It used to be Pulaski, so yeah. they, they, they didn't even pronounce it right. <laughs> they, they took the name of Pulaski because they were proud of Cashmere Pulaski. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What so, about, was there, there was that pool. Well, oh, the pool. Oh, so that was really John's time, though, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the odd size. It, yeah, was it really odd course. size, John, or is it? it, it the story was yeah, the that. Story was I would melt that, but really at the uh, at the big meeting that night when we voted on the pool, we had 1,100 people in the in the gymnasium, and the people are very adamant, saying, yeah, "We'll vote for the pool with some stipulations," and the stipulation was that it would not be used for a team. Teams. That was a community pool. And that really started back, Frank, in about the 30s with the community chest. Right, right. And there was money that they people at that time back in the 30s. It's like our United Fund or yep. something. Yeah, yeah. That's where United Chest is what we call it. Okay. Uh, and, and Frank started that, and they put okay. every year they put money for a swimming pool. Yeah. Okay. And collected, yeah. and they had that money there till uh, oh, we, we built did. a pool in 1974. Right, right. So we said we'll donate that money to the school if they build a community pool. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And going back to one of the reasons why I believe in a community school very much is because we have to extend education not only to the kids but to the community. We have right. to involve the teachers in the community. And we ha and 
when you involve the people in the, in the school, they become attached to the school. They become identified. Now the com community is providing a service because it's not, the community pool is not only for the kids, it's open to everybody. Right. Everyone and gets to use it. Including the senior citizens. Sure. That's why if you want, they all talk about uh, referendums for school buildings in Wisconsin. Right. If the, the senior citizens don't vote for the school, they will if they have a service. You know what happens in Pulaski? The senior citizens will vote for the school because they use the community pool. Right. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah, and they get invited to community dances in the school gym. Mm -hmm. The kids come to the senior citizens meeting and give them some music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the senior citizens, if you abolish the Pulaski High School pool oh, in the school, <laughs> the senior citizens would complain. <laughs> yeah, Talk about the, how the doors would swing, Frank. You all. Oh, that's right. That's oh, right. right. That's right. Well, that, that was when I read the book on community schools. It says, come into the school, uh, be, use the school for various purposes, including physical education and everything else, play basketball at night, whatever. So he swung the doors in. But I, we opened the doors out. Uh -huh. So the school goes to the community. Yeah. It swings both ways. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, Frank, you go back, I mean, you talked about the philosophy and how you got started and all that, and, and back in the 1920s and 30s and 40s. Yeah. All this stuff would still work in the same way today, wouldn't it? I mean, if you were a school superintendent. Much of it. See, a community school doesn't have to be the same in every town. Right. You probably don't need a swimming pool in uh, Shorewood. They have a swimming pool. You see, you have to you have to know the community, the needs, Frank. The need, yeah. That's what strikes me is that you knew you knew that people knew the community and the needs. Right, 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 right. right. Well, the other thing that strikes me is that over the years, the Pulaski schools, when you were there, really used kids and to to go out and f to find those needs. Right, right. So you weren't just saying this is something that somebody sat in the office and decided. Oh, you said right. we're going to go talk to people. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Well, that's fascinating. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. That's a little different, different tack to community education than Flint. Right, right. So, well, you know what's interesting, though, John? Uh, last week when I was in Des Moines, they showed a videotape that was a film that was put together in 1941, I think it was. And they really call it, it was at that time they talked about the Mott Foundation. But what, what amazed me about that, you've seen To Touch a Child, it was, it was even more... Uh, that whole business of you need to match the needs of the school with the needs of the community. Right, right, right. The foundation did that. The right. school is not for kids, it's for everybody in the community. That's, that's one thing that Krug said in the, in the curriculum construction. You don't teach about anthropology in Pulaski because nobody was <laughs> maybe interested in, Pula in anthropology, but that's not a saleable skill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You have to develop your curriculum according to the needs of the people, mm -hmm. not only for self-development, but, but for community development. And you have to do it today with it, all the technology exactly. yeah. and all the things that are going on today. So if you really believe that, then the schools will look a lot different than some of the schools that we see yeah, today. Right. Oh, yeah. In fact, you can have a school without a building. Sure. Sure. Uh, Mrs. Uh, my, my friend here, I have a good a friend in uh, Green Bay that teaches piano. And my granddaughter goes to that piano teacher. You know what? She has a school, piano school. A piano school. You, you have to develop. Right. What are the needs? What is the goal? The school should have a goal. What kind of a goal? To develop individuals and to develop a community. See? And if, you ha if your goal is music, then you'll go to the Juilliard School of Music. <laughs> That's why they argue whether the parochial schools or the public schools are better or worse. It doesn't make any difference whether they're called what they're called. It's what they are serving, what their needs are. Are they fulfilling the needs? They can be called Drobleau schools. <laughs> <laughs> See, that doesn't make any well, I think, you know, putting together those needs and resources. I mean, for George and I and John, I'm sure so you, you remind... So you need a tax base, by the way. Exactly. Our tax base, when I came to Pulaski, was 780,000. 80, 780,000, you know what yeah. it is now? 480 million. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 
See, we expended the resources. Just like I started with Tom Firm Brothers, uh, because they had the money to develop that country school into a, a pretty good school. They put in toilets. One of the one of the things we sold the outside districts on is indoor toilets, <laughs> not just education, because that was developed. That was good. A good life needs a good conveniences and good services. <laughs> When I would be in his office as a high school principal, and frankly, so you know why the carpenters? He had a nice office, by the way. I said, so, "Why well, the carpenters there?" He said, "Because of the nice tax space we have." <laughs> yeah, right. The resources that we have. I had. You know, I was just. I was just thinking about this. When we we give this, yeah. some of this information and tapes on to Jack Minzy. That I the real parallel. The Franks, the Frank yeah. Manley and Frank Joswick operated about the same way. Because Frank Frank Manley over in Flint did the same kind of thing. I mean, he saw the needs, and then he would go out and grab the resources. I mean, he found his rich guy, oh, yeah. C.S. Mott, you know, oh, and all yeah, of those other I things. See. He operated in pretty much but, the same fashion. But you know what strikes me, Frank, in, in hearing you talk about your approach to the schools was that I mean, you kept saying the schools can help expand the resources so that the oh, community yeah. development aspect yeah. of that was such a critical part. It's interchangeable, yeah. Which, yeah. which is really kind of a little bit of a twist, I think, on community well, schools is. As, as, as I've known right. and seen right. them, that, yeah. that each one yeah. grows because the other one grows. If you dismantled the Pulaski, High, Pulaski school system today, the people would be mad. Yeah. Because it provided instruction and services and all kinds of resources. Right. But I think from our standpoint, you know, like historically, I mean, in terms of, That's of your I, work, that, that we, Pulaski owes you a lot, but I think, you know, that part of why George and I are here is because Wisconsin and probably the country. Or you a lot in terms of he that was kind a of vision. The he visionary. was a visionary. I the visionary. Say Frank Joseph was a visionary. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's just fascinating. Well, I'd really be interested in seeing the Red Book article as well. So if you get a chance, maybe John, you can yeah, send us a copy of it. Get it. some parts. It's good. It's I'd good. Like to see well, those are always a lie a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why the University of Wisconsin has the Colorado. The the boundaries of the university are the boundaries of the of state. The state. That's exactly. the same idea. Right. Right. We used to kid Frank because he was very yeah. aggressive during school reorganization. We always said the boundaries of the Pulaski School District were the boundaries of the state. 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 <laughs> <laughs> now that's ambition, right? But, that's, but you know, that's what Lyle Martin said. But you know, <laughs> the, the, but the other point that that I found interesting in in hearing you was that you you went back to the university, you went to conferences, you kept saying. Right. If I'm really going to be a service to the community and the school, then I need to learn some things. Right. I need to get exposed. Right. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I heard that from you more than I hear it from a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Getting out. That's why I went to Jackson, Mississippi. Right. To find a doctor. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you can't, not going to find that person sitting in Pulaski, right? No. Right. So that's why I think you need your superintendents to vision beyond right. just the school's needs. I mean, most superintendents think about school and they don't worry about the community that much unless they have a bond referendum. Right. And I think you have to have that community school philosophy. And bonding of the school and, and the community. Right. Together. Yeah. And then you're concerned about all the needs. And, and then the education, the there. within that education, kind of takes care of itself. Well, yeah. Because right, 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 right. you learn by doing that. Right. If, right, if, right. if one is good, the other is going to follow. Right. We see so many teachers now and, and educators that, that don't this see is that. Why you I'm, learn from the community. I'm very interested in uh, what's happening in Wisconsin when Benson says w the small school districts are too small. Oh. <laughs> you see, uh, that's why uh, when John and uh, when I, when after the people in the community, uh, uh, that's why I bring up that August 12, 1938, because they didn't have trust in us. Trust, yeah. Then their community developed services, people became more bonded to the sure. school. Since I, I since that happened, after 1938, every school meeting, and we had a general meeting, we don't have a unified district, we have a general, we have three, four hundred people coming to the meeting. Every budget that we proposed was okayed. Mm. That's interesting. Right. You did it, I did it. Yeah. Yeah. You never had one? Turn never. No, since Frank, I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you and I, we, 
No, there were battles. <laughs> sure. We had some battles, and there were people, there was always opposition. Oh, well, sure, opposition. they're selfish people. But at the same yeah. time, and frankly, the one that was, that was after my regime, too, that one was turned yeah. down once, and that was made by a selfish group as well, I think. Right, right, right. Taxpayers. Sure, if the selfish group gets to, going back to Krug's, uh, love thy neighbor as thyself, if that group becomes too selfish, that's why capitalism is okay, providing that the capitalist doesn't become too selfish. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> if you have the, the, the needs of the larger group, the community. Right, right, you know, right. Just right. selfishness and greed and profit. Yeah, right, right, right. And that's real hard, and right these days, I think that's very right. difficult. Yeah. The one trouble with the Reagan business, <laughs> going back to national politics, is that the trickle economics w would be good, providing that the trickle went down to the people. But right. it stayed in the down pocket. Barnet. Yeah, right. It's mm -hmm. trickle down far enough. Right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, thank this, you very much. Oh, this has been great. This, uh, this has been yeah. wonderful. Yeah. You know? The trickle um, didn't go down far enough. That's this really, I thought, it was very important. That you oh, know, this, has been oh this, is this has been absolutely fantastic. Because it goes beyond whatever I could explain to you. Oh, no, this is really great. Going back to SESO, that's a good outfit, but I don't know it's going far enough because a small town is still a small town and small resources. And Vincent uh, now became convinced that, uh, what do you call that, voucher system or the oh, choice. No, school choice. School choice. Right. school choice is good, good, providing, because if the local community can't provide that choice, that need, right. that kid wants, wants uh, microbiology or whatever, and they can't teach it because they haven't got the resources, they haven't got the teacher, then the, then the community, even the school in Wasaki is a little short. Mm -hmm. So they ought to combine with other towns. See, that's and, why the government... That's right. And what happens is the exactly. many super tests put the walls up at the boundary. Right, right, right. You well, see, the problem that I have with is, uh, the idea the public school people are against choice, but they don't want to create options within the public system. Right, and if right, they did that, right. then you wouldn't have this argument well, about brothers, choice, sure. private well, choice. Well, uh, Brown Brothers provided a choice because sure. they had the resources. Sure. But if you have a small tax, now with 480 million, you have you yeah. have a base. That's you right. You need a base. Right. Yeah. See, well, it's the same as you buy a farm. You do, you can't buy a farm with 15 bucks. You have to have 15,000 bucks. <laughs> Yeah. You know, base. I have to you know, really add to that. This is a good example of what we've been talking about. We have students from the Pulaski School District that are doing the videotaping video of this. That's right. Nothing that's has right. changed, uh, <laughs> Frank, and this is the, what this is what you created. <laughs> right. Right. We're sitting in Green Bay doing it, right? <laughs> We're not in Pulaski. Compare the schools to a business. You know what happened way back when there was a little store, and it satisfied the community. But that store was small. It only sold tobacco and sugar and potatoes and a few other items. Then the people became more rich and they became more enlightened. And the mind expanded. They wanted more. So they developed a bigger store. Then a deep, now a big, now that's why coal became rich because he developed a bigger store coal to store serve more big. needs. Right, exactly. The uh, store became a good service center, right. you see. Yeah. This has been fun. This has been good. Thank you. Uh, thank you.